An adiabatic steam turbine operates with inlet conditions 200 bar and 600 degrees C and a mass flow rate of 20 kilograms per second. The expansion is polytropic with N equals 1.176. The turbine discharge is at 40 kilopascals. During the expansion, a small fraction, 10% of the mass flow rate, of the steam is extracted, which means it's removed from the turbine for use elsewhere. This occurs at 20 bar. Determine the power produced by this turbine. So we'll start off by summarizing our given information. And I think it's best to do this with a little sketch of the turbine. So we show, show the turbine symbol here. And this turbine is producing some power. So we'll indicate that as a rate of work transfer for the turbine. Inlet conditions we'll label as state point one and we're told inlet pressure is 200 bar, inlet temperature is 600 degrees C and there's 20 kilograms per second flowing in. So that's our inlet conditions. Continue on through the problem statement. The expansion is polytropic with N equals 1.176. So this tells us that during this expansion PV to the N is, is a constant where N is 1.176. So that's probably going to be important to relate properties at one state point to another as we go through this solution. Next it says the turbine discharge is at 40 kPa. So the turbine discharge will show over here and we'll make that state point 2 and that's at 40 kilopascals. Notice we only know one property there, so we're going to have to get another property before we can fix that state. Problem then goes on to say that during the expansion 10% of the mass flow of the steam is extracted. So we'll show that here. Call that state point 3 and note that its pressure is 20 bar. So again we only have one property there. What are we asked to find? Well, we're trying to find the power, which is a work rate, of the turbine. Our assumptions, we'll see what those are as we begin working with the equations. So we'll set that aside for a moment and we'll begin our analysis. So we've been asked to find the power that this turbine produces. So we'll start to work with our energy equation. And we always start off with the entire equation and then make our assumptions. So rate of change of energy in the control volume is equal to the rate of heat transfer minus the rate of work transfer plus a summation over the inlets, mass flow rate at the inlet, enthalpy, kinetic energy, plus potential energy, minus exactly the same thing at exits. And notice there's two exits in this problem, so that's why the summation sign is there. But it's the same three terms, enthalpy, kinetic energy, and potential energy. So now we can take a look at the assumptions that we're going to make. So we're going to assume steady flow. So into our assumptions we say steady state. It's described as an adiabatic turbine. Notice adiabatic steam turbine. So we can say no heat transfer. And get rid of the heat transfer term. And we'll also assume that kinetic and potential energy are negligible. And that's at all of the inlets and all of the exits. So KE and PE negligible. So now we can write down what we have left. So this work is negative on this side, so I'm going to move it over here. So we get W dot 
for the turbine, because that's what's in this control volume, is the turbine, is equal to inlets. We have just one of them, and we've already labeled that one. So that's m.1h1 minus our two exits, m.2h2 minus m.3h3. So let's look first at these mass flow rates. So remember that we also have a conservation equation for mass. The rate of change of mass in the control volume with respect to time is the summation over the inlets of m dot inlet minus summation over the exits of m dot exit. So again, it's a steady problem, so that goes to zero. We have one inlet and two exits. So this tells us that m1 equals m dot 1 equals m dot 2 plus m dot 3. Now if we take a look at what we've been told up here, the inlet is 20 kilograms per second, sorry m dot 1 is 20 kilograms per second. This exit at 20 bar here, we were told that that's the mass flow rate there is 10 percent of m dot 1, which means that it's uh, 2 kilograms per second. So m dot 3 is equal to 2 kilograms per second. So that's equal to m dot 3. So we can take those two and go down here and solve for m dot 2. So m dot 2 is equal to m dot 1 minus m dot 3, which is equal to 18 kilograms per second. So back to our energy equation here, we know all three of these mass flow rates. Now if we can figure out these three enthalpies, we can calculate our power. So we'll turn our attention now to calculating the enthalpies. So state point one, we know the pressure is 200 bar, and we know the temperature is 600 degrees C. So we can go directly to table A4, and turns out this is superheated steam. So we can go to A4 and look up our enthalpy, which is 3537.6 kilojoules per kilogram. And while we're there, we'll also look up our specific volume, which is 0 0.01818 meters cubed per kilogram. So that's everything we need to know there. Enthalpy is the main thing we need. Now we go to state point two, and the only thing we know so far at point two is, it, is that it's at 40 kilopascals. So we know the pressure, and that's all. So we certainly don't know enough yet to look up the enthalpy, because we can't do it with just one property. However, we need to recall that we also know that P1 V1 to the 1.176 equals P2 V2 to the 1.176. So it was described as a polytropic process. So we know P1 and P2, and we know V1. That's why I looked V1 up here. So the only thing we don't know in here is V2. So that's going to be our second property. So rearranging this, V2 equals V1, P1 over P2, 1 over 1.176. So put our numbers into here, V1, 0 0.01818 meters cubed per kilogram. P1 is 200 bar. P2, you need to be careful here, get this in bar also. So that's 0.4 bar. Taking a ratio of pressures here, you need to make sure they're in the same units raised to the power 1 over 1.176. Calculate that out, and it comes out to 3.5862 meters cubed per kilogram. So now we have two properties, pressure and specific volume. So if we go to table A3, we find this specific volume is between Vf and Vg which tells us this is a mixture. So we say, therefore, it's a mixture. So to calculate enthalpy, we need to first calculate the quality. So the quality of point 0.2, 1 
will be equal to V2 minus VF over VG minus VF. And so that's our 3.5862, our actual value of V2, minus VF taken at 40 kilopascals, and that's 1.0265 times 10 to the minus 3, divided by VG, 3.993, minus 1.0265 times 10 to the minus 3, and that works out to 0.8981 and that's no units on that, it's dimensionless because it's a quality. So we can use that quality to get H2. So that'll be HF plus the quality times HFG and HF is 317.58 plus our quality 8981 HFG is 2319.2. So H2 works out to 2400.45 kilojoules per kilogram. So the last thing we need to get is H3. And this is exactly the same pre procedure as we just went through because also at point 0.3 the only thing we know is pressure. Pressure happens to be 20 bar. So V3 is the second property we can get and we can get it the same way as we got V2. So V3 will equal V1 P1 over P3 times 1 over 1.176. So same procedure exactly, just a different pressure that we're ending up at meters cubed per kilogram for our V1. P1 is still 200 bar. P3 is 20 bar. So V3, calculate that all out, works out to be 0 0.12881 meters cubed per kilogram. So when we look at our tables at 20 bar, we find that this V3 is greater than VG. So V3 is greater than VG, therefore this is still superheated. So we need to go to table A4 for that. So therefore, we go to table A4, go to the 20 bar block, go down to this value of V3, and you'll find you'll need to interpolate between two entries. But when you do that, you find your H3 is 3,052.31 kilojoules per kilogram. So finally we're ready to put everything into our energy equation. So the power of the turbine is equal to 20 kilograms per second times H1 which is 3537.6 kilojoules per kilogram minus m dot 2 is 18 kilograms per second times h2 is 2400.45 kilojoules per kilogram minus finally the extraction point 2 kilograms per second at 3052.31 kilojoules per kilogram. And calculate all of that out. It works out to 21.4 times 10 to the 3 kilowatts, which is equal to 21.4 megawatts.